Hey y'all, welcome to part four of my series on building my Gatton CNC. Now in this video, we're gonna concentrate on the construction of the CNC table itself. Now this is a still capture, again, from SketchUp, in which I drew the table and stand at the same time. Now in my last video, I went through construction of the stand with a few small exceptions, I didn't get my shelving in. That'll come as a later at a later date. Uh, and the main reason for that is for ease of construction. I'll get the whole thing assembled, then I'll put in the shelving. Now, this video, however, we're going to focus on the construction of the table itself. And uh, the design for this table came straight from the builder's plans that came with my Gatton CNC uh, with some modifications. Now Dave provides a plan to create a table uh, for to build your CNC from and they're good plans so it, it's worth digging into looking at and following. So let's go ahead and get into the SketchUp model here and do a little bit of looking around at the design. Uh, I guess we'll start with the elephant in the room and look at the first thing that pops into everybody's mind is this big cutout right here. Um, that is going to be used for a jig that will be attached here to allow me to clamp vertical uh, parts vertically to the front of the CNC to cut box joints, dovetails, etc. And it will also give me uh, six inches, I believe, six inches of clearance. Yes, six inches of clearance here up front. Uh, at a later date, I'm going to be adding a rotary fourth axis. So that will allow me to bring my gantry all the way to the front and uh, place the bit right over the center of my rotary axis and be able to turn between centers here using the CNC. So that's going to be further down the road, but I figured in building this, we're going to plan for the future. So if we look underneath at how this is constructed, it's actually uh, pretty simple. Um, now, it's uh, done basically with pocket hole joinery as per Dave's plans. If you don't have a pocket hole jig, you don't need to worry about it. You can drill through and make butt joints. Just drill through and screw them in. You can see how I framed out this last portion here where the cutaway is. And uh, per Dave's plans, we have the filler strip down here for the gantry lower rail. And I have my uh, linear rail angle drawn in here as well. It's a fairly simple design. It doesn't have to be anything super, super special. It just needs to be nice and sturdy. Now I'm going to go ahead and unhide um, some parts here just to show you these green pieces right here are they're just simply eight and a half inch long pieces of two by four uh, and what they'll do is I'll be attaching the table to the stand that way so the CNC table will not physically sit down on top of the stand Rather, it will be a separate structure that I can remove from the stand and use the stand for something else down the road should I want to do that. And that also explains why these yellow center legs on the CNC table went so far up above the top level of the stand. You can now see where that comes in. That's enough chit chat out of me. Let's go on ahead outside and make some more sawdust and get this table built. So the first thing I did was trim off those rounded corners from the 2 by material. Then I went ahead and started drilling all of those pocket holes. Okay, now I have brought out a piece of uh, 
three quarter inch 18 millimeter Baltic birch plywood and um, I'm going to use that as a nice flat tabletop to build the uh, CNC table on. Um, the reason for that is simply put the plastic table that I use as a work table is anything but flat. So um, now to make a nice 90 degree jig here that I know is going to be 90 degrees I'm using uh, this inch and a half angle iron that I had here in the shed. Now I know that this is not 100% perfectly straight. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Even though I want this square, um, my material probably isn't 100% straight either. Uh, now I can fudge that a little bit, but what is important is that the corners are at 90 degrees to one another. And the way I'm going to do that is, is I'm going to ignore the factory edges of this uh, Baltic birch with one exception, and that is to clamp this down. And I just clamped it down, referenced off the factory edge here, so I didn't catch an end if it happens to be hanging out a little bit as I walk past it. Now I'm going to use a tri-square and some more clamps to clamp this piece down. And the way I'm going to do that is bring this up here about halfway, about halfway up the side of the steel, bring this other piece of angle iron up and just adjust it until I have a good 90 degree corner here inside then flip it to confirm to verify nice and square there nice and square then I'll clamp this down to the edge of the Baltic birch First piece, make sure we're still square. And we are square. Okay, now I have a nice square angle to reference my work pieces off of. With the stand and the table frame completed, now it's time to turn my attention to the work surface of the CNC table itself. And for that, I've chosen a material that maybe some of you have never heard of, and that is this MDO board. I'm going to bring you in for a close-up. You can see what I'm talking about here. Now, MDO board has been around for a long time. It's basically a plywood, just a standard plywood, but on the face, on the A side, it has this phenolic resin impregnated. In some cases it's fiber, in other cases it's a real thick form of craft paper uh, that's bonded to the surface. It's put together under real high pressure. Now MDO stands for medium density overlay and that describes this phenolic impregnated phenolic resin impregnated uh, coating. There is also HDO, which is high density overlay. Now you can get this in um, the, with the paper bonded on one side or both sides. Now it is a softwood core plywood, meaning it's uh, pine, fir, spruce, things of that nature. But for this application, it's going to be nice because it's good and flat. Also, it's a lot closer to a true measurement on thickness 
Uh, this is three quarter inch, and when I used my calipers to measure the thickness of this material, uh, it came out to 0.745, so almost, I mean, we're talking five thousandths off of three quarter inch. So it's very close to uh, the actual dimension. Of course, your mileage may vary, but, uh, and it's always worth checking the thickness, but it's going to be a nice, stable tabletop for my CNC. Uh, now, this here is the backside of some of the NDO, and this piece down here is going to be the actual CNC tabletop. I'm going to go ahead, because I live in Southern Oregon, I need to go ahead and coat this and finish this plywood before I assemble it, uh, mount it on the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and give it three coats of polyurethane just to seal this before I put it down. That way I don't get any unpleasant surprises um, later on when the wet season comes along. Okay, with the stand complete and the table frame built, I can now go ahead and make the two together, then put the tabletop on it and install it. Now, from here on out, the, this assembly is going to start getting heavier and heavier and heavier. So, with me being just here by myself, I need to get it put in its final position and try to get it as level, shim it up as level, level as possible. So, that's what I'm going to do first. Then it'll be a simple matter of using some pre-cut two by blocks to mate the table frame with the stand. Get it nice and level into position. Then I can install the top and we can continue the build from there. Okay, for those of you who are into numbers, what I've just done is I've given myself 18 inches from the back of the machine to the wall. That way I can get all the way back behind it should I need to. And I have from the base to the wall on each side, I have 21 inches. It's not going to be much and it's going to be a tight fit, which means I'm probably going to have to cut back on the ice cream a little bit to get around it. But one of those sacrifices that we have to make. So also what I have to keep in mind is that this tabletop is going to be two inches plus. It's going to overhang the frame by two inches plus on each side. So I'll have to keep that in mind when it comes to getting around the CNC. Now the way I have this drawn up and the way it's going to be built, the stepper motors for the y-axis are going to be on the back of the machine, so I will need to be able to get to them. Uh, I already have extension cables for it and everything for my Xylotex drive box, so that's not going to be a problem. But the way the machine is designed and built, my stepper motor for the x-axis is going to be hanging on this side. So I'll have to keep that in mind. Now, again, for those of you who are further into numbers, another design difference between this that I'm building now and my shoestring budget CNC is when I built the shoestring budget CNC I built it too tall. I'm only five foot seven. I'm not a huge guy and even though my table was only 24 inches wide I could not reach the far side. I had to get on a step stool. Number one because I had a lead screw hanging out here Number two, because it sat up so high, I just couldn't reach. I have built this so that the tabletop should be 36 inches from the ground, thereabouts, or roughly kitchen countertop height. That's a good height for me because even with it sitting here right now, not in its final position, this frame needs to come down some still. I can stand here and reach back to this second to the last brace here, I can almost reach the back of the CNC table from the front. So I've already increased my uh, reach there. I can reach well under 
that dead space behind the router bit when the CNC is all the way back, when the gantry is all the way back. So that's another reason why I'm building it the way it is. And it's also convenience for me. It's a heck, the lower this sits to the ground, the better for me because that's less I have to lift something heavy to put up on the machine table. So let's go ahead and get these blocks drilled, get this frame leveled up, set at its correct height and get it mounted on there. Okay, here I'm just showing you that uh, using uh, number 10, two and a half inch long exterior grade wood screws to connect the two by four blocks to the CNC table frame. Then going around with the mallet and the level and making sure I get it driven down to the proper height, making sure to keep it level all the way around. Then further attaching those blocks to the uh, CNC stand. Then with that finished, place the tabletop on the frame, get it centered, and go measure the center of my 2 by frame using my straight edge, draw a line, then go around with my tape and measure every six inches. Then everywhere I made a mark, I would countersink, then drive a number eight by inch and a quarter exterior grade wood screw. And here is the finished tabletop. Now you'll see that I don't have the uh, shelves mounted down below yet, and I don't have that center portion cut out yet. But other than that, we are basically finished with the tabletop. So in the next episode, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll start adding our linear rails and uh, getting our uprights put on. So that's it for this video. If you got anything out of it, please give me a thumbs up down below. And if you'd like to follow along with the remainder of this build, consider subscribing to my channel. Whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and y'all take care.